Uh, good evening, afternoon still, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Jorge, and well, uh, the, the, the title of this talk is Learning to Persuade <coughs> Artificial Intelligence for Debt Collection. So, uh, first of all, uh, maybe to, to get a feeling of the audience, I don't know if any uh, of you have worked with reinforcement learning before or are familiar with the concept. Okay, very few, so it's, it's good to... So hopefully by the end of this talk, you will have a better understanding of what is, what is this concept, what it has to do with AI, and how can you use it for your own projects in... in oh, great. In, in all sorts of different fields. So, uh, basically, I am working... I started working in a company called Liquid Labs. It's the company builder of the Auto Group in Germany. And, and there we, we focus on fintech. One of these projects is Collect AI. And so the topic is uh, about debt collection, right? Um, of course, uh, I would like to give you a quick introduction. What is reinforcement learning? What can we do with this with some examples? And I will guide you through these examples to some of the basic concepts that you can then extrapolate to actual data science related problems. Then I will tell you more or less what are the advantages of these kind of algorithms compared to more traditional statistical approaches. And I'll summarize with some points. So what is reinforcement learning? Why, why using the word AI? Because, of course, we hear a lot of people using this term in many projects, many services, but uh, of course it's good to, to be, uh, to some extent, uh, a bit ex skeptical and really ask, is it fair to call something AI? Why? When? So to give you an overview of, of this field, uh, basically when we think of artificial intelligence as the umbrella embracing all sort of algorithms related with learning by interaction with the environment, then we can see inside this field one subfield called machine learning. Now basically machine learning cares about moving all these theories to practice. How can we use these algorithms to really learn fast and to, to, to profit from this? And inside this group, we have different kind of learning. Reinforcement learning is about learning, again, by interaction. So you need to be to able to modify your environment, see what happens, and then keep learning on your own. Now, just to get us, uh, give us a, a common starting point, these famous guys tell us basically that the key concepts in AI are having an agent that has some senses to perceive the environment, and also some kind of actuators that can modify the environment, see what happens, and then keep learning on its own towards an arbitrary goal. So it has to have an objective in life, right? Now, Machine learning cares then about how to put this in the, in the computer and make it run. So traditionally, you would have um, people putting data and a program inside the computer, and then the computer will give us the output that we need. Right now, with the machine learning paradigm, we still have the machine ingesting the, the data, but then we provide it with the output we want to have, and then the machine will give us the program that we will use. Right? So this is the shift in this paradigm. Now, there are these three major groups of machine learning algorithms. More or less to give you an example, imagine uh, when you were little kids, um, you were told by your mom uh, that, that, let's say, carrot soup is the tastiest soup you could ever try. Right? And you trust your mom, and then you just keep eating carob soup for many years. Basically, she did something called supervised learning on you. Now, let's say at some point, you grow older, you go to the supermarket, and then you find out that in, in the vegetable section, there's other things that look the same. You know, they have maybe the same shape, the same color, and then you decide to give them a try. So basically, you are putting similar things together and trying them. That is basically on supervised learning. And the third option is reinforcement learning. So that's good. this would be the case when you give full freedom to your curiosity. Okay, what about tasting everything inside the supermarket? 
right? There's a lot of options. And when you do this, actually, you will not be able to do this fast because there's plenty of options there. Now, if you take a look at uh, the definition, another famous person tells us about reinforcement learning, you have these key components as well there. So similar to AI, we need an agent that will try to achieve a task. But in this case, reinforcement learning talks about reward and punishment. We just let the algorithm know how it feels when it takes certain actions. So now we come to the game of exploration versus exploitation. So coming back to the example of the soups, you could go to the supermarket, try to make a soup of all sorts of ingredients uh, on the hope that one day you will find the ultimately tasty soup because you can try all sorts of things there. But if you keep exploring all the time, even if you know already some soups are really tasty, most of the time you will be trying things that maybe are really horrible. On the other hand, if you keep only taking uh, or eating the soups that you already know that you like, you may never find the super tastiest soup for you. So there is this dilemma, right? How much of your time shall you spend exploring different kinds of soups? And how much of your time shall you spend really taking the ones you already know you like, such that on average you are maximizing your rewards? Now, what can we do? Now that we are familiar with this theory, uh, what are some examples of people uh, doing cool things with reinforcement learning? So just to give you some context, this year, the MIT, in the review they publish every year, actually, yeah, this slide was a bit shifted, uh, published, in any case, in this list, reinforcement learning as one of the 10 breakthrough technologies of the year. Just to give you more or less a context, uh, last year it was uh, deep learning, so-called techniques there. With deep learning, ba basically you are learning the senses. You know, you are learning how to see, how to listen, how to perceive. Reinforcement learning is the step above this. With reinforcement learning, you can integrate all these modalities and make decisions on top of that. So it's a higher level of abstraction. So in, if, for example, uh, what about being lazy, right? Laziness in the sense of being efficient. Uh, maybe some of you have seen this video. Uh, people use reinforcement learning to train this, this, train this game. And, and the whole point, of course, is to make points, not let the ball go down. Um, but after a while, it, it's not only learning how to play, but it's actually learning how to play by moving as little as possible, because maybe it feels a bit tired. Right? So it's in this moment where you start understanding why is it important to leave the algorithm and give it more freedom to really explore all the possibilities. It may end up finding something that is you know, not necessarily the most trivial thing. Right? <laughs> So to me, this, this is a great example. So what about the, the principle? What did we see just now? Well, so for example, in Collect AI, one of the, the, the important parts is about learning to communicate with people at the specific times that are, that are optimal. You know? We want to minimize the time that happens between sending a message and a person opening it. In this graph, you can see that every bar is a time of the day, right? Tuk, tuk, tuk. And on the left side, you see how valuable this time agent thinks is to send a message in this time bucket, and how often is recommending the system to send messages in the same time bucket. So we are learning to really optimize the use of our energy in this respect. Now. We also would like to know what is the best action to be taken given a context. Okay, so here we have someone trying to push this, this machine. <laughs> and, and it surprisingly can react really well, really fast. It knows how to move so it doesn't fall down. It keeps 
trying to reach its goal. It keeps trying to pick this little box. And uh, yeah, so hopefully robots will not remember this guy. <laughs> 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 so in this case, again, going back to the debt collection case, here we have actually being the people, the debtors we are contacting, the ones pushing our machine to the limit. And then the machine has to learn to what are the best communication channels, the best time of the day, the best content to send to which person. And then we can perceive the reaction and try to optimize this such that we recover this outstanding debt as quick as possible and with as little resources as possible. Cool. So. Now, you know what to do. So then you can focus on doing it better, doing it faster, being more agile, right? These guys are going fast. Actually, this is a very new one, actually. Yes, it's, when it starts getting a bit more spooky, right? <laughs> so what you, will, what you see here is a simulation of different debt collection scenarios. That well, looks very complicated. But the first thing I would like you to pay attention is this curve. Basically, this is telling us how often it's exploring. And then it's just reducing, decreasing over time until it's mostly exploiting what it knows it works. Then, in this line, you can see when it wins and when it loses. These little dots means the debt was recovered. These dots, the debt was lost. Then, we can see some patterns, right? On top is the actions that the agent is taking. And you can see at the beginning some randomness. Later on, it finds a pattern and it starts repeating the same action because now it's winning most of the time, differently to when it was random. Later on, even if it already knows what it works, it explodes a little bit more. Now half of the time more or less is losing, but then it finds another pattern. Again, winning most of the time. Now, this is great. It found a solution. Explored a little bit, found a different solution. But what I think is the coolest part in here is this, this section. This is the total negative reward it gets. So the lower it goes from top to bottom, the more negative reward it gets. So probably it took longer or it was more expensive. So if we zoom in there, we see at the beginning it was reaching a certain cost. It found this pattern, but it worked. It explored again, and then it found another solution, but actually it's not reaching so low. You know, so basically it found a cheaper and faster solution to solve the very same problem. And that is what is important to have a continuously learning algorithm because what it works today may not work in one year, for example. Now, this is what I mean by learning to forget. Don't get stuck in previous solutions if newer solutions may work better. The tax collection department from New York City actually around 2010 increased its revenue by 8%. So yes, they acknowledged there was a very big increase in this when they started using this family of reinforcement learning algorithms, which are biased, different to traditional statistics. But on top of that, they also mentioned that they are very happy because these kind of algorithms can adapt to the environmental changes without significant extra labor or costs. So it will just adapt with the same infrastructure. Furthermore, of course, they also expect it to improve as more and more data is collected. Yeah, sorry for the, the shifts on the slides. So to summarize, um, AI is about exploration strategies. AI is about interacting with the environment, modifying it, and perceiving it. If someone offers you this solution, it's legitimately you know, something we can call AI. Now, because of the same, we should be a bit careful, right? We should demand people offering you these kind of solutions to be as transparent as possible, and also 
we should be aware that sometimes people don't ask these questions and you could see examples where things didn't work as, as they were promised. But nevertheless, you shouldn't be afraid. And once you go in this direction, if you think you can use this technology for your own business, go full. Because sometimes just sprinkling a little bit is not enough. Something we have found in several projects is that mainly the challenge is about culture. But once we start slowly convincing ourselves of the benefits compared to more traditional approaches, this is something that I would really recommend to everyone. So actually, I'm a bit uh, earlier than I expected. Uh, thank you very much. And please, if you have any further questions, feel free to, to reach us or contact me on LinkedIn. Thank you.